Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and welcome to another tutorial on alcohol inks. Today we're doing a technique that I call swiping and it's a way of applying several colours at once and then blending them in together. Uh, it's very, very cool. So what we need to, for doing this is we're going to use felt, which is our normal method of applying, which, whereas we normally use felt on something like um, an applicator tool. This time, we're going to be using felt stuck onto either a ruler or a protractor. A protractor is one of the ones that's got the half circle, so you've got a bit more room for hanging on to. Um, I wasn't able to get one of those when I went shopping, so I've got a little ruler. What we've done is pop some Velcro onto it, that, so it just holds our um, felt in place, or you can actually just use a line of sticky tape just to hold it as well. Okay, so now we're going to load this up with all of our ink colours and then apply it to the card. So I'm starting off with a couple of the newer colours from Piñata. We've got our golden yellow. We've got coral, and I want quite a bit of the coral colour because it's a lovely soft one. Then we'll have a little bit of Senorita Magenta and an even smaller bit of Sangria just to give us some darkness at the top of our sky. So we're actually making a scene with this one. We then grab the Clairo extender and just put some drops of that along as well. And grab our card and start to swipe. And I think I've been a little bit cautious. I'm going to put a bit more colour on at either end. So let's bring our coral down into that yellow a little bit. And I'm going to take the magenta up into the sangria. I'll pop on some more extender. I was just looking at the width of my card and the width of my ink application, realizing I needed a little bit more there. Okay, so let's just pop it on and we just swipe. So back and forward, and then up and down a little bit until the colors start to blend in together. I'm just gonna push up into that pink a little bit more. I think we want some more coral in there and less of the pink. Well, maybe it's too delicate. I might grab a little bit of tangerine, actually. Where's my tangerine? There we go. Let's add a little bit more orange into that. And bring it down into the yellow a bit. Drop a bit more extender on. Excuse why I just dripped a bit of ink, but that will go away once we start working it. And let's just swipe that on. That's more like it. I was wanting a little bit more of the orange in there. So just swipe gently back and forwards until you've got those colours blending together. Okay, we're going to let that settle for a moment. Could have had a bit more of the um, sangria up at the top, but I think I'm just going to leave it. Sometimes you think, I can keep adding to it and then you end up messing with something too much. Okay, let's peel that felt off. And add a fresh piece on. I want to do two cards in this tutorial showing you a couple of different coloured effects. So let's just press our felt over the top there. I'm going to give my work area a quick wipe. Put that one out of the way to dry. I don't want to be spritzing alcohol on that one. I could, would create a different effect, and I'm going to show you a backing card where I have done that. But that one we're just going to leave to dry as it is. So let's get, I'm um, wanting sun bright, the bright yellow, Baja blue, and again our Senorita magenta for this one. So we've got some really bright colours. Now, our blend will give us more colours, but we only actually need to apply three to our felt. Let me get my bit of card stock ready. And you know what I'm going to do with this one, what I should have done last time, is put a tiny little bit of double-sided tape on the back of it. Just to hold it in place on my craft mat a bit. But I actually don't want much there. I'm a little bit worried that it's going to give me um, a blob in the card. Let's see how we go. Okay, so let's put our colours onto our felt. I'm making sure I cover enough to cover the whole card. So we've got our Baja Blue 
our sun bright yellow and I'm not actually touching the colors to each other this time they will blend as we swipe let's put our Claro extender on so a couple of drops on each color and you can see it's already starting to blend the two the other three colors in together and let's then start our swiping and as I work upwards on the card the yellow and the pink will blend together to make orange and the green the yellow and blue will blend together to make green now with this one we're going to actually add some patterns into it so we could just do some gentle sweeps I'm going to leave that one like that because I'll show you some other patterns that I've created on some ones earlier because I really like that gentle sweep on that one. So let me just grab a couple of others to show you. Here's one where I did more of a, a ragged. So I had my panel and actually with my swiping tool did my swiping up and my pattern more abruptly rather than a gentle wave pattern. And on this one, I created the wave pattern, but then I actually spritzed it with a little bit of alcohol just on the, with the spray, just spritzed a bit over the top. So we've still got a bit of patterning, but we've got some of the blobs and movement as well. So you can do both, or you can leave it just as this bright rainbow effect. Now we're gonna actually mount some of these up into cards. So you can see what we can do with those. I'm not going to spritz this one. I'm just going to leave it as it is because I'm loving that pattern. So let's just pop that one to one side. Give our work area a quick clean. Put our lids on and pop our colours away. Only so I don't knock anything over and end up with ink colours everywhere. And now that we're going to be doing some sticking together, I'll slip the gloves off. Okay, so let's just check that this one has dried. That's looking fantastic. So I'm actually going to do some stamping on this one first. So I'm just going to put a work pad up to stamp onto. And we're creating an Australiana scene. So I've got my Gumtree Silhouette and Hilly Horizon stamps. And I could use Memento Ink or the Catherine Pooler Midnight Black or the Memento Tuxedo Black. Either will stamp over the top of the alcohol inks. But I find I prefer the Catherine Pooler that it dries a little bit quicker. Um, and so I'll be able to move on and do the next stage quicker. But just remember when you're inking up with this ink pad, it's a very squishy ink pad. You do not want to put any pressure on your stamp. Just tap really gently across it. And you're stamping on a slippery surface, so place your stamp down carefully. Give it a really good press. We don't want to have to go over this one a second time. Okay, and then lift straight up. And it's probably going to stick to the card. Excellent. Okay, now I might just pop one over the other side a little bit. Actually, this one I'm not going to have the all of the trunk showing I just want to bring a little bit of the leafy matter in good press wonderful okay just pop that across where I'm going to clean it later now and turn this one around to the side a bit. Now with the Hilly Horizon, I want to actually stamp it a few times to sort of fill in a little bit of darkness down the bottom there to give us a bit of grounding area. So I'm going to stamp it once to sort of ground that tree. And then we're going to bring it in and stamp it a few more times and almost sort of fill in with it. So I'm actually using the stamp to actually colour and fill in that ground area. OK, 
Okay, so that's given us a more solid black line along the bottom. Doesn't the black stamping make those colors stand out more? But wait, there's more. So what I've done is already pre cut a die cut. Now this is from the Paper Roses range. It's the stock girl and her horse. So we're just going to stick this onto a base card. But before I do that, the inks are going to need to be, they either need to be heat set or they need to be left for quite a while. But because we want to keep working with it, let's just give them a bit of a heat set. Now, I am just going to pop this one to one side to give it a little bit more drying time and go back to our second one. And again, I've got a die cut ready for this one that I think is going to look magic over the top of that. And I did have a base card somewhere for it. Never mind. Do I have a base card sitting here? No, put it somewhere else. <laughs> okay, so we'll just stick the die cut down. So I'm just going to lift off. I've done it with an adhesive backing on it. And I must admit, it's a very complex die and I haven't actually stopped to take out all the little bits. So it could be more, even more detailed than what we're going to have. So just peeling off the backing. So this is where I've put... Um, a thick double-sided tape on the paper before I ran it through the die cutting machine and that way it's already got this adhesive layer onto it. Just checking if there's a few bits there that I do need to take out. Bits are sort of halfway. Of course it's all nice and sticky now isn't it because I've got the tape on the back. I think Matthew, my cameraman, is just smiling wryly at me getting into a mess here. Because, you know, that's one thing that we do, is get ourselves into a mess. Okay. Imperfections and all, let's just stick it down, just so you can see the effect. grab a piece of white card just to pretend that we've got our base layer so you can see how wonderful that's going to look once that's layered up so I will get that one layered up and do a photo of it to load up with our clip when it goes to air but oh, that is so cool so the, the, the um, contrast with the bright colors and the detailed die cut just works really well together but isn't that a fun technique so now let's go back to this one. And I do have my base card ready for this one. And I'm gonna do a little check where it's a bit not showing too much to make sure that we've got that heat set enough. And while I'm waiting for still more, I'm just gonna put the tape. I normally put my tape on the card that I'm sticking down, but because I want to give that as much drying time and handle it as little as possible, I'm actually putting the tape onto our backing card instead. hoping <laughs> that I put it all in the right spots. Oh, brilliant. That's leaving the right border that I wanted. <laughs> I usually have a smaller acrylic block for helping tear up the tape, but goodness knows where that is on the table, so I'm just using what was at hand. Rightio, let's lift up that bit of double-sided tape, and I'm just gonna run over this with the heat gun just to make sure that those inks are really, really dry. just don't want them smudging at this stage. Okay, let's lift up her backing tape and stick that one on. Come on, be nice to me. Thank you.
Just checking what borders I had allowed on the backing card. And hearing the lovely peaceful sounds of chainsaws in the background. We do live in the country after all. Okay, let's press that down. Excellent. Okay, now let's get our die cut. So this is one of the Paper Roses dies, which is really, really gorgeous. She's got some great ones in the Australiana ones, the Stockman and the Stockman on the fence and birds and stuff like that. And being a bit of a horse lover, I think this one is wonderful. Okay. Now, I don't want to stress where those reins are, so I'm just going to support it a bit while I'm pulling off that last bit of backing. Uh, again, I had put double-sided tape on the back of the card before I did the die cutting. So I've just grabbed it with tweezers so I can manoeuvre the feet of the horse and the girl and get them all. I want them just touching where the backing card meets. So I'm just going to pull her down a little bit. Excellent. And press it down. How's that for an easy card that just looks stunning? And as I said, with that stamping in the background, how much does that bring those colours out brighter? So that's just a really funky way of putting on your alcohol inks, is using that strip of felt on something like a ruler or a protractor, and then just do it in different patterns, um, do different sunset colours. You can have so much fun with it. Of course, we could also uh, do some other effects with it as well, like I did with the other piece that I spritzed some alcohol onto it. There's other bits that you can do. So let's just give that a spray and get a few things moving there. So if I, so I'm gonna move those ones out of the way so I don't accidentally spray them. So let's just spray a bit of alcohol on it and that's just going to get those inks moving again. We could also add some extra which colour should we grab? Maybe this the magenta again. We could also add some runs of colour. So putting some colour at one end of your card, putting a bit of alcohol with it and letting it run down the card. So this can look great if you're doing a scene and you're wanting to create a little bit like stormy clouds in the background. Let's get our orange and some. Oh, I'm going to play with this one a bit more. Sorry, Matthew, you thought you were about to be finishing filming and I've started playing. Now let's just add some orange. And it's running beautifully even without me adding extra alcohol. Run it around. If you don't like the way it's going, just come in with your alcohol and move that bit around a bit more. Remembering, of course, that any effects on alcohol with alcohol ink on cards can often be a little bit random. So it's about experimenting and having fun. Sorry, I'm <laughs> facing that to me so I can see what's happening and forgetting that you need to see what's going on. I do apologize. Turn it around this way so you can see I'm letting that orange run down the card a bit further this way. I'd like a little bit more movement there, so I could actually come in with one of my blower tools and just move that ink around a little bit. You, you're right over there, my Matthew. You uh, <laughs> having a few issues with the camera work today? So just move that around if we want to, and just look at these great patterns we're getting. So yes, so you can just swipe your pattern and leave it as a pattern or you can continue to play with it and add other bits and pieces to it. Totally up to you. It's just important that you actually get the color on there and then just start having fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, this swiping of alcohol inks, and uh, we'll hopefully do join you soon for another bit of adventure with our um, colors. Thanks for watching.